best Google Scholar search strategies start over on Google Scholar. So if you are new to a certain field, head over there, and this is what I would do. I would start playing around with the auto suggest. So for example, I can go in and I can go solar, and then I go, okay, well, I know I want to know about solar cells, but let's have a look to see what sort of language they use. So solar cells, solar energy, solar panels, that's great. So I'm gonna type in solar cell, and then I'm gonna to start to see what kind of suggestions it sort of gives me. This is going to tell me the best keywords that I can use in Google Scholar. You see, nowadays with all this AI fancy stuff that's going on, we're quite often using semantic search like questions, ideas to search, but it is the OG of searching literature. So you have to use keywords and this is a way you can kind of find out all of those. So you go through and one thing I like to do is use the alphabet methods where I say, okay, solar cell A, applications and methods array. And I start taking note and saving these in an Excel document as to all of the things that I, I could potentially want to know about in the future. After I've done A, I use B. I go B like this, battery, ba ooh, band gap. I don't know what a band gap is. So I'll put that into my Excel document document or wherever I'm keeping these ideas, then I'll go C and then I'll go characteristics, capacitance, simulator, character, all characterization. That's something I need to know about. This is how I would go through. I'd go through the entire alphabet using this system and start trying to get the language that is used in my field so that I can search around those terms. If you're a little bit lazy, you can head over something like Wikipedia, where you can sort of like get the terms from the Wikipedia page of that area that you're searching. So obviously I want to know about photovoltaic Excel. So let's have a look. I'll use photovoltaic. I'll head over here, put in photovoltaic, and then I'll use that. I'll use that same thing, photovoltaic. So that's interesting, but I'm going to go A, applications, array, absorbers, apparatus. You get the idea. This is how you start getting an idea of the appropriate search terms that you need to use for a particular field. Um, you can also just head over to ChatGPT and say, hey, give me a list of keywords in the field of whatever. Let's do that right now. ChatGPT, here we go. Give me a list of keywords in the solar cell field for Google Scholar. Ugh. So now what this will do is kick out a load of keywords that I could potentially use to search. So here we are, photovoltaic, solar energy conversion, thin film, Ooh, all of these are really, really good. So this is a really nice way of starting that broad search. But once you're in Google Scholar with some results, there's so much more than you can do. Not many people use these techniques. The problem is too many people say, oh, Google Scholar, I can't really use it. Blah, 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 blah. But the problem is they don't know how to use it properly. So here we go. So I'm going to go in, I'm just going to put a little bit of a search in. Let's have a look at perovskite solar cells. This is something I know a little bit about, but not enough about. So I'm going to go, uh, let's go review. So I'm starting nice and broad. With a review article, quite often, there are many different um, studies that are put together into one document. That's a really, really great place to start. So I like to look at um, here anytime since 2024. That will tell me about the recent advances in a field. I really use this side a lot. Like I use this and I also don't necessarily sort by sort by relevance or date. Sometimes I do if I want to know the newer stuff. So let's say anytime sort by date. Here we are. This is all of the stuff, the newer stuff sorted by how relevant and recent they are. Fantastic. This is where I would start. Now the thing is, is that when people start um, trying to understand the results, they often get overwhelmed. So here is how I would use it. So first of all, I'm looking at the title of the paper. Great, obviously that's where we're starting, but if certain names keep on popping up in a field, so here are NG Park, that's interesting to me. If they are underlined, you can actually click on them and get their own Google Scholar search page. And then all of this is now gonna be very interesting to me because he's obviously a researcher in my field. So remember to follow certain researchers. Remember, here we are, you can say follow here, you can set up an email um, every time this guy produces a paper. So this is really, really important that you can click and follow authors. That's the first thing that I would do. Another thing is if you are not getting the sort of results you like, you need to start looking at the Boolean operators. They are completely underutilized. Boolean operators on, on Google Scholar are and, 
not or or and it's really really easy look let me show you over here so if i've got a certain search this is search term one let's say i'm looking for solar cells i'm just going to be sc but the problem is is so broad but i want perovskites so i want that overlap so by putting and and it has to be in capital letters or oh, I put CAND, try to show you capital. That doesn't work at all. Let's get rid of that C. It has to be in capital letters because otherwise it doesn't recognize it. But we're only going to get this slither. So if you're getting stuff that isn't super broad, you need to identify why and then remove that there. That's the first step. Then if you're getting um, stuff that is a little bit too broad, but there's some sort of like fringe elements or like Google Scholar is a little bit confused because the keyword is shared by a few fields, you can use NOT. And what that does is give you this big call here, but not the other search. So search one, and then this other phrase, we want to get that out of our search. So that's not. And then the last thing, if our searches are too specific and not really useful, then I start using or, because then you get two unrelated potentially fields that you get this one and you get this one all combined together into one search. So that is the three sort of Boolean operators you should be using because these are so, so very important because uh, not enough people sort of, you know, persevere through the learning curve, which is Google Scholar. You can also do this in other ways. So once you've kind of found your um, subject area and you're sort of exploring, there are many ways that this can go. These are the most important ones right down here is cited by. If you click cited by, what this will do is give you another page, which is more up to date um, papers that have cited, that have referenced that particular study. And then I like to go sort by date and that will give me all of the best um, um, most recent citations for this article. And then you can see I can put search within citing articles and then I can put another search in. So within these, maybe I want quantum dots. And then you can see within these citing articles, that is what we got. And then articles within the last year sorted out by abstracts or everything. So this is a really important way of going out and sort of just sucking in like a basking shark swimming through the ocean open of science and research. Ah, just getting all of the most important stuff and filtering out with your gills, with your science gills, uh, all of the important information. So let's go back to our original um, search. Now, one thing you'll notice is these quotation marks. It automatically did this it put it in quotation marks but if you are having too broad of a search and you want to really sort of like hone in on something you are interested in and it's given too broad you can put it in quotation marks so here obviously it knows we want perovskite solar cell and then review so if i wanted um something else i could also you know use our boolean operations and i could say like that and um i don't know perovskite solar cells and up what's it called conversion yes up conversion. Okay, maybe, oh, here we are, up conversion. So this is how we start getting sort of like deeper and more niche into our subject area. That's really, really important. Then we've got other things down here. Let's go back. Um, we've got related articles. I use this a lot when I was doing my PhD and my postdocs because these are the related articles that it thinks um, I would want to read. So make sure you understand the buttons down the bottom, what they do, and then See some of these, you can you know access this with PDF, you can access this on HTML. Some of them don't have anything next to them, which means that it may be a little bit awkward uh, to find the full text. But if you click on all five versions, sometimes you're lucky and you end up with a link to other stuff that may be useful uh, to access the full paper. This isn't going to be friendly to me today, is it? No, but it, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and another thing down here, related searches, this is where you can really get an idea of a research field based on the related searches. Google wants you to find more information about what you're searching for. And you can see we can click on all of these. And one thing I like to do is click on this and then open in background tab open this one, open in background tab, and then I just work my way through the tabs, looking at cited by, looking for researchers, and just really building up that kind of knowledge base that I should read from. Um, and that is how I essentially sort out the roses from the thorns. Is that the right saying? I don't think it is, but it doesn't matter. Um, another really, really unutilized part of uh, Google Scholar is this bit, advanced search. Click on this and you see 
This is automatically populated by my search, but I want all of the words with review in it. I want the exact phrase, so that's the equivalent of putting it in quotation marks, um, with at least one of the words, so that's the or, 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 without the words, so that's the, like the minus or the not these ones, where my words occur anywhere in the article or in the title, so that's really powerful if you really want to hone in on titles. And that's really important because a lot of researchers put a lot of effort into their titles to make sure they're searchable. It really sort of like just makes sure that you're really finding the most important stuff for your research authored by published in and I use this a lot articles dated between this and this and that's particularly important in fast moving fields because you want the most up-to-date stuff so in solar cell technology I really don't want anything from like 2015 oh no <laughs> <laughs> These are now 2015 to whatever. So that is how I sort of like search uh, more in depth and not enough people actually click over on this little sandwich bar up here or burger bar I think it's called and uh, head down to advanced search. So that is how you sort of like find deeper and deeper um, understanding I guess in your field. If you like this video now you need to go check out this one. I talk about how to use Google Scholar using cutting edge AI techniques. I'm sure you'll love it. Go check it out. All right. Good. I think that was everything I wanted to get across. Thanks. See you in the next one.